Those of you who have your Bibles, I want you to get right into this. I want you to go on and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. I welcome all the members, partners, covenant friends, all those that are streaming live. We pray that the word of God will continue to edify you and build you up and that you take personal time to get in the word yourself. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. Create your own study time and fellowship time with God. That's the key to the joy of the Lord is fellowship with him, time in prayer, time reading the word beyond just streaming. Praise God. So I want to teach from a subject that's very powerful and it's called the power of grace. The power of grace. Most of the time, if you would ask most Christians, what is grace? The common definition would be it's God's unmerited favor. And that's not incorrect, but it is incomplete. It is more than just God's unmerited favor. Grace is a power. It is an anointing uh, that gives us God's ability beyond our own ability. Sometimes when we feel that we have reached our breaking point and we feel that we can't deal with certain situations, you don't need favor. You need power. If you're dealing with stress in a marriage or financial stress, at home, or even stress uh, based off of symptoms of sickness and disease in your body, negative doctor's report. You don't need favor. You need the power of God. And grace is more than just unmerited favor. Yes, it's God's willingness to use his power in our behalf, even though we don't deserve it. And so we thank God for it. Amen. It's the very foundation of our salvation, how we come into the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2.8 says that we are saved by grace through faith and that not on yourselves is the gift of God. He, amen. He said that it's not a works lest any man should boast. And so we can boast, but thank God it is a power. And I believe that during this time of coronavirus, we got people that have been kind of getting cabin fever inside and being re reintroduced to their children and you got the father there and the mom there and kids back, you know, home, uh, you know, some from college, some out of school. And we've seen, you know, of course, the uh, virus and the death toll that it has taken. Thank God it haven't taken uh, you and I over because we're redeemed from sin, sickness and disease. Christ became a curse for us. But it has, has added straight stress and a change of our lifestyle. Everyone is different now. People are wearing masks. You go into stores, and uh, there are uh, very few stores, uh, those that are open, people in there. And when you see them, they're wearing masks. You know, this has changed our lifestyle. Uh, a lot of businesses have shut down and closed, praise God. You get ready to say, oh, let me go eat at this restaurant. Remember, oh, they closed. And so it has changed our lifestyle. It has changed how we think. It has changed uh, uh, how we are, as we call it, socially distancing ourselves from one another. Some people are in such fear that whether you have on a mask or not, you walk in a store, they just jump from you there like you got something. Well, I, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but we need to understand we need grace because there, there's, we're in a time of tension, we're in a time of stress, and we need to understand the power of grace, Christians, and much more than just a merit favor. So I want to share some exciting things with you from the scripture. I want you to get your Bible and want you to follow these scriptures with me, praise God. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I want you to look at verse 1 and verse 3. And yet, like I said, praise God. Take time to strengthen your family and, and reacquaint yourself with one another. But some, some, some people can't handle that. They, they, it's too much wife, too much children, too much. I need my distance. You know, and so, you know, I, there was one brother. They asked him, they said, now, I, 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 we're going to give you two choices. And we're going to give you A and B. He said, choice A is during this coronavirus, you got to stay home with your wife, your family, your kids, and all your relatives. Choice B, he said, B, wow, they ain't, he, 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 I don't care what it is. I just need, because he's under stress. But the truth is we have grace, amen, to live and deal and fellowship with one another. And whatever circumstances this coronavirus has caused, then we are able, praise God, to handle it. 
So, again, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse 1 and then verse 3. Therefore, my son, this is Paul talking to Timothy. Paul, of course, have gone through shipwrecks, stonings, and beatings, and hard times, and he's writing to Timothy, his son in the faith, who is a pastor. And he says to his son in the faith, my son, be strong, look at that phrase, in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, if you're saved, there, that, there grace is available. There is a power, there's an anointing. And notice he said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So if you're saved, you're born again, grace is available unto you. It's in Christ Jesus. If any man, any woman be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. Old things have passed away and whole, all things have become new and all things are of God. Amen. So thank God grace is an anointing here. Yes, it's unmerited favor. But there's times you don't need favor. You need strength. You need endurance. You need to settle your mind. He says grace, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And then in verse 3, he begins to use military terms to let them know there's going to be hard things as Christians we're going to have to go through. In verse 3, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. In other words, soldiers have to be able to suck up pain. Soldiers have to be able to go when they don't feel like going. Soldiers have to be able to fight when they don't feel like fighting. They must have endurance. They must be able to, to have stamina, praise God, and be resilient to pick themselves up. And now he's re, uh, using a military term and saying we got to have a soldier's mentality. And if you really be honest with you, Paul said in the last days that there will be perilous time. We're living in them now. Men should be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. He talked about truth breakers. He talked about uh, how that people would have a form of godliness and, uh, uh, but denying the power thereof. He talked about how there would be betrayal and death. Jesus himself talked about it in the last days before his return. He said that there would be wars and rumors wars and earthquakes. And we're seeing all of these things come to pestilence. We're seeing diseases that they're still trying to find a, a vaccine for. And so here he said we got to be strong at this time. And it's going to take grace. It's going to take grace. The Bible says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And he's telling them, look, man, there's going to be just some hard things we're going to have to go through. It may be that, you know, and I'm going to paraphrase, but we've seen the financial ram shaking. We've seen the Congress and senators shaking. We've seen the, the sports arena, all of them shake. Shut down all of the major football stadiums, baseball, shut down. Everything that is shaken can be shaken, praise God. And he, here he's saying we got to do a heart. You got to be strong. This is not a time to be weak. Even if you feel weak, Joel said in three, Joel 3.3, 3, let the weak say I'm strong. Don't confess your weakness. Confess your strength, praise God. And as a Christian, I have the grace of God, and I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. Now, I want you to look at this. From the Amplified, praise God. It says, so you, my son, be strong. Listen, listen to this phrase. Strengthen inwardly. We already see grace working. I'm going to give you a definition right after I read this. I was going to give it to you at first, but I wanted you to get this. It says, strengthen inwardly. So grace not only works on the inside, it, it works on you and in you. It's the inner strength, the power of grace. Strengthen inwardly. In grace, this spiritual blessing that is found only in Christ Jesus, which means we have something that the world don't have. There's an inner anointing. There's an inner grace that can push us and carry us beyond, praise God, the place where the world give up, quit, and just faint. There is a grace available to those that are in Christ Jesus. And then in verse 3, he says, take with me, your share of hardships. There's going to be some hard times. There's some things that's been shaken right now. The economy has been shaken. Jobs has been shaken. People's health has been shaken. I mean, you don't have to, you know, pick up a paper, turn on any channel. It's about the virus. It's about the worldwide pandemic. And he said that you need to take your share of hardships and suffering. There's some things which we are called to endure, not be destroyed by endure that means we're going to outlast praise god this virus are you listening to me when the when, when let me tell you something 
The Bible says here we are to endure as a good first-class soldier. I ain't talking about just a guy who just barely made it in the, in the army. We ain't talking about a spiritual Goma power. We're talking about, praise God, the Green Beret. We're talking about the Navy Seals. God says, you're the best that I got, and I have saved you for this time. And I want you to be strong. There's a grace. There's an anointing that is available to give you inward strength, even in the midst of hardships and sufferings and hard times as a good soldier in Christ. I done already preached myself happy. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to rise up. If we're going to believe the word of God, it's time for all Christians, praise God, to get your Bible, not only read your Bible, but believe your Bible, praise God. And there is a grace available for you and I. Now, before I give you my first statement, let me give you a definition of grace, what grace is. And I know it's unmerited favor. I'm not taking away from that. Thank God. God wants to do favors for us, stuff we don't need and deserve. God blessed us and, and, and does things for us that were undeserving, praise God. None of us deserve to be saved, but he saved us anyhow. But grace is much more than that. Grace is God's divine ability. Wow, I like that. Just divine ability. Divine ability. Hallelujah. I'm not God, but I have his DNA. Hallelujah. And he's in me, and I can tap into this grace of this divine ability in me. It's God's divine ability and strength in you, and it can come on you. Paul talked about the grace of God being on him, in you, and on you, increasing your ability. In other words, when we go to our breaking point, when we go to where there's no more strength, that I can't take this anymore. You remember, Paul, we're going to talk about it. Lord, uh, let this thing depart from me, these stonings and beatings and shipwreck. And, and he had the care of all the churches. And he was talking about beating with a rod. And he was stoned and left for dead. And he went before the Lord and said, God, I can't take it anymore. Take it away. And God said, my grace is sufficient and my strength, listen what he's calling grace, strength is made perfect in your weakness. When your ability, Paul, ends, that's where my ability begins, praise God. Hallelujah. And we can tap into that. We can tell you can endure more than you think you can endure. There is a grace that takes you beyond your own ability, praise God, and it's God's divine ability. Amen. Praise God. And the more you get into this word, I quoted this, I think the last time I talked, and it keeps coming up. Uh, uh, Second Peter, the first chapter, verse 2. Grace and peace, oh my God, divine ability, strength, grace, and peace will be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's time to get in the Word of God. The more words you get in you, the more of that ability, the more of that grace, the more of that strength will be manifested in you and on you, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now look at this first statement. Grace empowers you then with inward strength to go through different difficulties in life. Think about that. Grace empowers you with inward strength to go through different difficulties in life. In other words, we don't like to deal with stuff. We don't like to confront stuff. There's stuff that makes un us uneasy. Like I said, some of us is just being home with our family now. You ain't used to your kids being there. And it's a lot of tension. Because who's going to want to watch this, who want to watch that, and they want this, and we want to go here, and why don't you go in this room and that room? And, and if you don't watch it, it's like, man, I want my own room. And, I mean, you go in there, there's another kid in there. And so it, it, it can be difficult for some people. But like I said, there's a grace, praise God, for you and your family. There's a grace, praise God, for you, even if you've lost your job or it's temporarily been laid off. There's a grace for provision. There's a grace, hallelujah, to keep you strong. There's a grace where that you can have joy even in the midst of sorrow, peace in the midst of confusion. Even though everyone is in the house, every, there's a grace, but it comes from the inside, and it empowers you with inner, inward strength to go through different difficulties in life. It doesn't matter what is happening with the economy. There's a grace, praise God, that will cause your needs to be met and until whatever you waited on, your job to return, your business to open back up, your stimulus check to come, there's a grace where you can be, praise God, content, even though, praise God, that there's no money right now in your pocket. 
Paul said, I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in. Listen to that. Beat it. Stone. Left for dead. Shipwrecked. Whatever state I'm in, he said, I have learned how to be content in every situation, praise God. One translation said, I've learned the secret of being happy in every situation, praise God, to the point where I'm not disquieted or free from uh, where I've lost my peace. And he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. We just need to learn to tap into that grace. Think about it. God is not going to call you to be in any situation where that he don't give you the power to go through it. Now, human strength might, get, might run out, but that's where grace comes in. It's an ability and a strength beyond your own human strength. Praise God. This is what Paul was telling Timothy. Son, there's going to be some tough stuff going on. Men will not endure sound doctrine. Going to heap their own self teachers, have it itch your ears. And we're seeing that right now. Running from church to church, trying to find preachers to tell them exactly what they want to hear. There was all types of false doctrines, even those that came against Timothy because of his age. He was a young man in the faith. That's why he called him my son. And he said, let no man despise thy you, but be thou an example of a believing spirit and love and faith. There was a lot of things Timothy had to go through, and Paul had gone through these things. He said, what you need is grace. He's trying to teach Timothy what he learned about the grace of God. Hallelujah. Am I trying to say things going to change? No. I can't hold this back. Because that's what you're waiting on. You're frustrated because your finances haven't changed. You're frustrated because you, you, maybe your, your, your healing power in your body haven't manifested yet. Your body haven't changed. Or, or, or maybe your bank account haven't changed. Or maybe you're praying for your child and they haven't changed. And that's why you're frustrated because you're trying to do it yourself. But I'm going to go on and say this. And we'll, we'll hit it later on. Faith changes things, but grace changes you. The thing might not change, but when you change, praise God, it doesn't disturb you anymore. Paul's situation with stonings and beatings, when he went before the Lord, God never said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the, the persecution. I'm going to stop the shipwrecks. I'm going to stop all the false doctrines. No, he says, my grace is sufficient. And my strength is made perfect in your way. And then Paul changed. said, okay, so you mean I got what it takes? Yeah. Well, I take pleasure in necessities and reproaches in all these different persecutions. For when I am weak, then the power of God is strong. Say, faith changes the thing, but grace will change you until the thing you are waiting for change. Until the money shows up. You don't have to lose your peace, lose your joy. There is a grace, praise God. Hallelujah. So, we're going to talk about this thing. I'm going to take my time. I want you to get it because this is good. I'm preaching to myself and nobody else. We all need grace. There's grace on us to do whatever we are called to do. And God knew before that pandemic ever hit the earth, praise God, grace is sufficient to carry you through, to deal with whatever situation, until your change come. Praise God. Look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 6. Praise God. Now, I'll tell you one way to change things. You, wouldn't think you need James himself said it. You need to make sure the tongue is, is the course setter. The Bible says that, that uh, we turn ships and we turn even uh, a horse's body, though it be so powerful, and ships are driven with great wind. It's turned about with very small helm. He likened it to the tongue. If you want to turn storms around, if you want to turn your finances around, you're going to have to line your words up with the word of God. Instead of talking about you so broken, it's so hard, I'm going to lose everything. This pandemic, oh, my God, I'm, oh, I just, ooh, I just believe that mama and, and my cousin, I got some people in this state that have already died. and I, all, You don't have to quit speaking that the power of life and death is in your tongue. If you want to turn anything around, you're going to have to speak the word of God, put the word of God in your mouth. Hallelujah. And say what God says. But here James brings out something very powerful. And very interesting here in James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And let's look at verse 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resist the proud, but give grace to the humble. Hallelujah. God resists the proud, but give grace to them. 
God would not allow anything to come in your life that he would not give you the grace to go through. I don't care what it is. Now, we create stuff. We go out and try to help God and create Ishmael's and, and put pressure on ourselves and go buy stuff we can't pay for and, and go move in houses to that, that we can't too big for us and, and trying to keep up. We go out and, and create stress. But I want you to know, praise God, God, anything God calls you to do, he gives you the grace to do it. God called me the pastor. Right now, some of you say, well, pastor, I've been watching you streaming, and it's like, wow, I, it's just like it was when you was in church when we were sitting there. That's right. You know why I have a grace that's an anointing on me to do this? It's easy for me to do because it's not just my ability. It's the Holy Spirit on the inside rising up, praise God, and giving me the words to speak, praise God, that you and others out there need to hear, praise God. There's a grace on me. Just like there's a grace on the cameraman that's in this room right now that's done. There's grace on them to take that camera and watch. There's an ability. I don't have it on me. There's different grace for different people. There are grace on those directors downstairs who are putting this taping together, praise God. There's grace on the sound people up there who's, who's keeping all the levels straight. There's grace. And see, I, I don't run the sound. I don't do the camera, but I preach. But there's an anointing on me. There's an anointing on, on you. And that, let me tell you something. There's a grace for everyone. We'll eat, there's even a grace, praise God, to raise your kids. Hallelujah. God is not going to call you or put you in a situation and not give you the grace of God to go through it. Look at this. He said he give it more and more grace. He resists the proud but give grace to the humble. Who are the humble? The humble are those that realize I need God's help. That's your problem. You're trying to go to this thing yourself. How I'm going to get the money. How I'm going to get through this virus. How I'm going to protect myself. How I'm going to get my car payment and my, listen, my, my. You've taken on the care of all of this stuff. Without God, Jesus said, I'm divine. You're the branch. Without me, you can't do nothing. So that's your first thing. That's why you're being stressed out. Just like the apostle Paul, taking on care. You got to understand that it's going to take God's grace and your union with him to go through anything. And that's why he said the humble are those that just simply recognize, Father, I need you. I can't deal with this child. I can't deal with this virus. I can't deal with this financial pressure by myself. So, Father, I roll the care of on you. Give me the grace, praise God. I call upon and make the man on that grace in me to rise up. In, and when you do that, that's when, praise God, you'll enter into that grace. I want you to look at this from the Amplified. This, it, it really breaks it down. Hallelujah. He gives us more and more grace. Now, listen what he called grace. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, you know the Holy Ghost is your helper. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I'll send you a helper, a standby, a teacher, a guide. Listen what grace is. When we talk about grace, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He gives us more and more grace. Look at that. The power of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. To meet this evil tendency and all others for any type of pressure you are going through, any type of lack. Any type of danger, anything that the enemy is bringing, he says he gives more and more power of the Holy Ghost, praise God, to meet with and deal with anything that you're going through. That is why he, God, sets himself up against the proud, the haughty, those people who they don't need God. See, that's why the Bible says be strong in the grace that's in Christ. The world trying to do it by themselves. The world think if I can get enough money, if I can hold on to the power. That's what money and politics is all about. It's all about power and money. But God says no, even when the money ain't there because the money can't get you healed. There are things that only grace, the power of the Holy Ghost, praise God, can give you in this day and time. We all have been set on a level plane. I'm going to say it again, whether you're in the White House or the crack house, this virus do not care. And you need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. And if you're trying to go through this pandemic by yourself, on your own, with your own wisdom, your own knowledge, praise God, you're going to find yourself fainting. You're going to find yourself sick, bro, and disgusted because he said God gives. God gives. Look at this. He sets him up against the proud but gives grace continually to the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. Good God Almighty. Pride goes before destruction. There are a lot of people who do not want to admit, I need help. 
How you doing? Oh, if you get any better, I can't stand myself. You lie. You broke. You scared. You and your family. You're running out of food. You need the grace of God. God says if you humble yourself, I'll give grace. Grace comes from God, not your own ability. And so what you're going to have to do is humble yourself and admit, God, I need you during this time. I need you, praise God. My children need you. I need you for my finances. I need your wisdom. I need you in my home. I need you in my marriage. Help me deal with this. Kid. Fa Father, I, I need you that we all back home again. Give me the grace, praise God, to, 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 re to reacquaint myself with my children. Give me the grace to deal with my husband. Give me the grace, whatever it is, to go on the job and work. Give me the grace to go and when I wear my mask or not, that I don't have to fear when I walk into a store. I need you, Father. I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know if you would draw your strength from me. Where shall I go? That's when grace comes on you. There's an ability. All of a sudden you say, praise God, this thing is not a bad. Because you humble yourself and realize that Jesus said, I am the branch. I mean, I am the vine, you are the branch. Without me, you can't do nothing. Just being humble enough to receive it. God, I can't pass it in church. God, I can't do these tapings without you. I need your grace. Hallelujah. You never go into a situation, whether you are running a camera, whether you're a parking lot attendant, whether you're a Sunday school teacher, whether you are a pastor, whatever it is, you're never going to assume that you can do it by yourself. God, I need you. I need your anointing. I need your wisdom, God. I can speak the word, but you got to give me the wisdom. Let it come up out of me, praise God. And when you humble yourself, it never fails. God always shows up and shows out. So he, he gives grace to those that's humble enough to receive it. God, I can't pay these bills. I need you. Hallelujah, I'm a tither. I, I'm not going to worry about it. I need you. Praise God. Cause manifestation come instead of you trying to figure it out. That's what I'm trying to say. Grace is available for every believer. And notice again, he calls it the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what he calls grace. It's, the, it's really the anointing of the Holy Ghost himself, your helper. Who is your strengthener? And how many of you know when the Spirit of God comes on you, you can do things beyond your own ability? Even in the Old Testament, Samson was limited within himself. But when grace, when the Holy Spirit, the power came on him, he was able to do supernatural feats, praise God. Took the jawbone of an ass, slayed a thousand Philistines, ripped up the gates of the city, praise. He would do supernatural things, tear a lion apart. Why? He wasn't dependent on his own ability. Elijah the same way. When he depended on his own ability and, and, and Jezebel got after him, he couldn't even go a day's journey without getting tired and wore out. The Bible says he, he ran and he went a day's journey and said, Lord, now I got one request that I might die. But thank God, when he's dependent on God's ability, he told Ahab, get thee up, for I hear the abundance of a sound of rain. And the anointing came on him, and he outran the king's chariots, the best Clydesdales in the land, for 20 miles. That's God's ability. And you can tap into that. You got more endurance than you think. You can go through more than you think you can do in this time. You can not only endure, but you can not only, I, I don't even say survive. I want to say you can thrive in the midst of this worldwide pandemic. You can come out of this thing, praise God, better than you went in it if you learn something about the grace of God because the power of the Holy Spirit is unlimited. He gives his spirit. And all God is saying is humble yourself. Get saved. Some of you, that's why you're scared. Get saved. You're trying to live life without God. He said, humble yourself. I'll give you my grace. You know what he's talking about for you does not say Jesus because grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And he said, if you realize that you're partying and all you're drinking and all that ain't working, your drugs, all that stuff getting high, I went down that road, praise God, done that, bought the T-shirt, and it was only until I cried out for Jesus, humbled myself and said, Lord, if you're out there coming to my life, that when Jesus came in and all of a sudden the war stopped and peace came over me. Grace has a name. His name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he gives you the ability Beyond your own ability, praise God. Mm -mm -mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, this is good for me. So then grace, look at this statement, is the power of the Holy Spirit strengthening your inner man. Wow. Remember, it'll come on you, 
but it's also in you. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Spirit strengthening your inner man. That's so very important. Why is that important? Because Proverbs 24.10 says, If a man faints in the day of adversity, his strength will small. People don't quit because they got a bunch of muscles and they work out. People quit because they see a pandemic and they see no money in the bank. And they, they, see, they see their children out of school and they don't know how they're going to pay for them when they go back to school. And they see the need for food and, and, they, and they see this sickness and disease that's killing people all around them. And, 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 and they see the economy shaking and, and their jobs shaking and, 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 and they, they look for strength out here and their spirit. There's no inner strength. And they faint in their mind. They say, what's the use? I might as well give up and quit. Hallelujah. But there is a grace available. Amen. Grace is the power of the Holy Spirit. Then strengthening your inner man. When your inner man is strong on the word of God. Feeds on the word of God. The physical body feeds on physical food. And produces a physical force called strength. But the inner man feeds on the word of God. My words are spirit and they are life. And while you're on feeding on the word, it, it produces a spiritual force called faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Get your CD going. Get your DVD going. Speak the word of God. Get feed on it, praise God. Hallelujah. Until your inner man get built up. And notice, remember, grace and peace is going to be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. And look at Ephesians 3.16. This is a prayer Paul was praying for the church at Ephesus. He said that he might grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with might. What is might? The power and the ability to accomplish anything, to go through anything, any situation. Paul said, I learned whatever the situation is, how to go through it, praise God. And he was talking about the grace of God. Reinforced with Mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself. That's what Jesus called grace. The Holy Spirit himself indwelling in your innermost being. That's your spirit man and personality. He said that, the, that he prayed that we might be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. By the Holy Spirit himself. Glory be to God, a comforter, a standby God. Don't tell me that, that, that you can't deal with what you're doing, going through right now. I don't care if it's in your home, if it's in your marriage, if it's in your body. No temptation has taken you such as common to man. And the Bible says God is faithful. And with that temptation will make the way of escape that you may be able to go through it or overcome. But it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't want to go through nothing. You don't want, you want to quit when, you, when you're in a man. It's weak. You won't give up when you're in it. You don't want to fight sickness. You don't want to fight coronavirus. People that have died, it's because the inner man, I just, just couldn't fight. It overtook them. But when your inner man is strengthened with might, the Holy Ghost, which is grace, he said, calls it the power to stand against it. It'll drive out the sickness. It'll drive out the disease. It'll drive out the stress. It'll drive out the confusion, praise God. And that grace is available for all of us right now, praise God. But most people, when they talk about grace, we just talk about God loving you, even though you sin, and, and, and I don't care how bad you get, and that is a part of grace. But when I don't, that ain't helping me right now when I'm, when I'm stressed out and I got financial need. That, that, I don't need, I know that, that that's not really helping me. We just, uh, the church is just taking grace and just talk about unmerited favor. And it is unmerited favor. You didn't deserve it, but it did anyhow. Yeah, you sin and the prodigal son go away, but by the grace of God. And yet, we've pushed grace to the point that it's almost like we are proud that, you know, seem like we glorify sin. I did all that, did all this, did, and God still loved me. Yeah, we did all that. But we misused grace. I'm going to help you something. In Romans, when it talked about grace where it says, where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. To a lot of Christians, what that means is, I can go out and get drunk. I can I, I do alcohol. I, I, I can go to the, to the you know, uh, with prostitute. I, I, I can look at R-rated movies, X-rated movies. I can do all this, and God is still like, yeah, it means that. But the Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God says, no. 
But it wasn't even talking about it that way. What it's saying, when the world where sin is abounding, sickness, disease, all of this, grace does much more. Grace is more powerful than the sin. So there's grace on you to say no to the drugs. There's grace on you to say no to the alcohol. There's grace on you to say no to that evil tendency. It's more powerful than the sin because sin is all around us, but where sin does abound, grace does much more abound, but it ain't been taught that way. Grace is an anointing. Grace is an empowerment. Grace gives you the power to say no and resist sin, resist sickness, resist disease, and any other thing that you've been redeemed from. And that's the way grace needs to be taught. That's what I'm teaching on it. The power of grace, that it is an anointing. Yes, it's unmerited favor. But there's times I haven't sinned, I haven't done anything out of the will of God that I just need strength. I need to go through something. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever that situation is. And grace is that anointing, God's ability, giving me the ability to go through whatever is necessary to do God's will. So here it says then that we are strengthened with might by spirit in the inner man. Now, I want to move on further and get to this scripture we've been talking about. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I've been giving you reference to it. Look at verse 1. Now let's teach from it. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And I want to remind you in verse, in chapter 11 rather, Paul had gone through shipwrecks, stonings, beatings. He talked about being beaten with a rod. He talked about a night and a day in the deep. He talked about in, in five times was I uh, beaten with, with uh, 40 stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with a rod once. Stone, left for dead, shipwreck. He talked about in pearls of robbers, in pearls of con. He talked about all this stuff he went through, and he said, no, all that was coming at me from without, besides all the stuff, the care of all the churches. And so what happened is Paul began to try to depend on his own ability to go do this, just like we do. We have to say, man, I, I can't take this. And that's exactly what, what the Apostle Paul did in, in chapter 12 then, verse 1. He starts off saying, it is, it is expedient. For me, doubtless, to glory. For I will come to visions and revelations in the Lord. He said, okay. Well, we know when you get revelation knowledge, this is what God builds the church on. Revelation who? Jesus Christ. God, the Christ, the Son of the living God. He was having visions. And, and, and any time you get vision, revelate, it's going to exalt you above whatever the enemy is bringing. So now read this next part carefully as we drop down to verse 7 and 8. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations that I was getting out of the word, there was given me a thorn in the flesh. Now, some people have an unwritten pencil that they, they, they put in there, and the Lord gave me. He didn't say that. He said, he's going to tell you who gave it to you. Uh, that was given me a messenger of Satan, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet or to harass me. Unless I should be exalted above measure. Now watch this. And because he said, so the devil was coming against him, not God. Someone said, well, uh, God allowed it. God, listen, whatever come against you, God got to allow it. The Bible says Satan is bound to only that which is coming to man. See, we pick up the Job syndrome. God allowed you. To, like the devil went and got permission from God to touch him. No, Job was already in fear. Are you listening to me? You better listen to me very carefully right here. God does not hire the devil to work for him. That's what it sounds like. All right, Satan, now I want you to go here and I want you to mess with Paul. I want you to mess. No, God, listen. God does not use the devil to teach the church. The Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church. He doesn't use sickness and disease. Well, God was teaching Job. No, no. Sickness and disease came from the devil. Satan went forth and smote him with bull. God was the one that blessed him with double. You need to read the book. Are you listening to me? And so here he said there was a message of, of the devil that, that came and it caused harassment, stoning, shipwrecks, beating, all of this stuff. And so naturally, just like Paul, just like me and you, you're going through something, who do you go through? You go to the Lord. He went to the Lord. He said, I went to the Lord. Look at this. 
And so he says, for this thing I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. God didn't give it to him. He just went to the one he should have went to. Who you think he's going to turn to? The devil. He was the one that was coming against him. So don't put that on God. God does not hire the devil to work and tempt and bring evil against his children. Satan is self-employed. If he's doing anything, he's doing it for himself. He came to kill, steal, and to destroy. So now that we move through that, he said, I went to the Lord that this thing might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient. Look at this. Look what he called grace. And my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Most gladly. Now look at Paul. Now like I said, faith changes things, but grace changes you. He said, most gladly. He said, my grace. He didn't say it was insufficient. That means it's more than enough. My name, my power, my spirit, the full. Paul, you got what it, what, 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 it, what it takes. Don't come to me cry. Resist the devil. My grace is sufficient, not insufficient. Have you ever cast a check? And it came back insufficient form? What did that mean? You didn't have enough. It wasn't enough. God, he didn't say it was insufficient. He said, it's more than enough. Glory be to God. And I'm telling you, you got more than enough to deal with your home situation, that worldwide pandemic. You got more than enough to deal with financial crisis, marital crisis. There's an ability that is sufficient, and it's in you, and it'll come on you if you start trusting God. But you got to change your attitude. Notice Paul, grace changes things, uh, 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 faith changes things, but grace changes you. Look at Paul. He said, oh, okay, God, your grace is sufficient? Hmm. Okay, most gladly then. Let me quit complaining. Let me get glad. I would rather glory. I'm going to start praising God in my infirmities, not for that the power of Christ, what is Christ? The anointed one and his anointing, that that anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit might rest on me. I take pleasure. Lord, forgive me for complaining and crying and memory. I take pleasure. Look at, look, look at grace changing him. I take pleasure in reproaches, in necessity. I need this and I need money. We need, we need this uh, more money in the bank. Whatever it is, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then am I strong. What he's saying, when I'm weak in my natural strength, then the strength of God is strong in my life. I want you to look at this and amplify. This is so powerful. Praise God. Verse 7 through, through 10. Look at this. Oh, my God. He says, yeah, we don't, we're just going to go right to it, 7 through 10. And to keep me from being <laughs> puffed up, <laughs> too much exceedingly elated, see, people get off, the, the primitives of Revelation, there was given me a, a splinter in the flesh, and it wasn't some type of sickness, disease. I heard people talking about Paul lies and Paul this and, and no, no. Notice who he called the messenger of the devil to rack it to buffet, to harass me, to keep me from being excess, excessively exalted. God didn't, God didn't, didn't put it on him. The devil came. He called it the messenger of Satan. Keep going. And three times I called upon the Lord and besought him about this. I begged him, just like some of you, God, I can't take this, God. It's, you're feeling stress. This, this pandemic has, has caused stress and, and necessity and, and, and when the company going to open back up and, and when the money going to come in and, and when we're going to get more, you know, I got the kids here and, and college and school and car payments and how sometimes we feel overwhelmed. And that's where grace comes in. We go before the Lord and he said that this thing might depart from me. And then here he says, but he said to me, watch this, my grace, my favor, my loving kindness, my mercy is enough for you. Sufficient, not insufficient. Well, the grace of God is in you. Be strong in the grace. It's sufficient. You got what it takes right now to deal with this crisis. It's sufficient against any danger, enabling you, I love this, to bear the trouble manfully. You need to look at people in the room where you're at right now and say, man up. Sometimes we just coward. We just don't want to go through nothing. That's what he's saying. Be a man. Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man. Remember, be strong in the grace as a good soldier. Soldiers are men, not children. Hallelujah. He said, the trouble, the bear the trouble manfully for my strength. This is what God said. He's calling grace strength. That's why I'm calling this the power of grace. It's an anointing. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. 
and power are made perfect, woo, fulfill and complete it, and show themselves most effective in your weakness. Oh my God, he said, the weaker you get, the more effective my grace is. Hallelujah, because you recognize it's not your power, it's not your honor, it's my power, it's my grace bringing you through. So let the weak say I'm strong, in other words. And in your weariness, therefore, I will be more glad. Let me change my attitude. Remember, grace, faith changes things, but grace changes you. Hallelujah, I can't change how my child act, but grace doesn't got a hold of it. don't matter how that act, it ain't bother me no more. Can't change nothing about that bill out in the mailbox, but I'm under grace. It don't, it ain't, I'm sleeping good now. Can't change nothing about this job situation that they tell me they may not call me back, but I'm under grace. I ain't even worried about it. How, see, the weaker you get, the more grace is showing itself strong in your behalf. He said, I'm going to glory most gladly in my weakness and infirmities that the strength, the power of Christ, the Messiah may rest. Yes, pitch a tent. Woo, over and dwell, almost over and dwell upon. It's almost like grace. It's, it's, this, it's this Holy Ghost bubble. It, it comes over you. The way all of this stuff and shipwrecks and stonings and be all this stuff. But you're not frustrated because this grace has come over you, your mind and your thinking now. So, for Christ's sake, ah, I am well, well pleased and I take pleasure. In infirmity, insults, hardships, coronavirus, layoffs, economy shaking, whatever is going on. If I have to wear a mask, no one in the store. Hallelujah. I take, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk about it with joy, praise God. Change my, because I got something that the world don't have. I got grace to go through this. Perplexities, distresses. For when I'm weak, woo, here it is, in my own human strength, then I am truly strong and able and powerful in divine strength. Hold that right there. When my natural strength, you ever felt like you at the breaking point? God, uh, this pressure, these bills, these children, I, I can't take it. House payment, car payment. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? My body, I feel sick. I mean, and then when you're at that breaking point, he said, when you're at that point, that's when he showed himself more effective. That's your natural strength running out. Grace is a divine ability that comes on you from God that even though the young men shall faint and get work, they that wait upon the Lord, he begin to renew your strength. Have you not heard? He give it power to the faint and them that have no might, he increases strength. Glory be to God. That's your human strength. When Elijah's human strength ran out, then God's supernatural strength picked him up and told him, go stand upon the mountain. When Moses' human strength was willing to quit and give up, God, praise God, strengthened him and said, what's that holding in your hand? Are you listening to me? When your when red sea is in front of you and the Egyptian army behind you, and it seems like there's no way out and all your human strength has been exactly aspirated and gone that's when divine strength kicks in god's ability is called grace the power of grace hallelujah Woo! And paul said i'm gonna start rejoicing i didn't put it up there but the next verse says i'm gonna become a fool in glory because the more you begin to praise god the more that anointing will come on you put this statement up faith then changes things but grace changes you some things ain't gonna change me that boy just getting on my nerves. That girl, she just always God and parties. And, and there you go frustrated and losing because God has given you the grace to deal with that. We just don't have no fun in it. I look in the bank account, ain't nothing in there. I don't know when we had to shut everything down. I don't know when they didn't call us back to work. And all the, it might not change. Well, what are you going to do until it changed? Be frustrated, lose your joy, lose your peace? No, faith changes things, but grace changes you. Watch this. Until those things, those situations you have no control over change. Woo! I'm going to say that again. I'm releasing my faith for my money. I'm releasing my faith for my children. I'm releasing my faith for my job. It ain't changed yet. 
So what am I going to do in the meantime? Be frustrated? No, Paul said I'm going to glory. I'm going to praise God. Hallelujah. Because I know grace is keeping while my faith is out there working on the thing, gathering my money, changing the situation, then I am going to let grace keep me in a place of total tranquility. Your grace is sufficient. I ain't going to worry about it. I'm going to let grace change me. So all of this stuff that was frustrating me around me don't bother me now. Until the situation changes. Isaiah 40, verse 31, Amplified Bible. But those who wait upon the Lord. Mm -mm -mm. A couple of verses up before I read that says, Have you not heard the God of creation? He neither faints, nor he do, does he get weary. He gives it power to the faint. That power is called grace. And those that have no might, he increases strength. Where in your inner man? Why? To go through whatever you need to go through. God's grace is sufficient. And what a lot of people do, they've given up, they're quitting because they think the world is coming to the end. But I want you to know, no, we need to wait. Wait means just don't sit around and just doodly doodly that wait means to expect. It means to look for that's what it's going to say. I'm expecting God to show up. I'm expecting God to move. Oh, you listen to me. I hear the sound of abundance around. There's coming a revival behind this thing. I expect the church, praise God, to be greater, the increase. There's going to be more members that come. I expect more people hearing this mess. Oh, my God, how, I'm looking beyond the virus. I'm looking at revival beyond that. See, I'm waiting. I'm expecting for the Lord to move. They that wait, who expect, who look for hope in the Lord shall do what? Change and renew their strength and power. That's grace. That's what happened to Paul. Paul went there arguing. I can't take this. Stone is in shipwreck. Everywhere I preach, they throw a rock. Every time I preach, they don't believe me. I got false brethren. I got people lying on me. I got talk. I got all these bills. I got these necessities. I was shipwrecked. I was left in. And then he went before the Lord. God says, hey, change your attitude. And that's what happened. He began to wait on the Lord, minister to the Lord. Praise God. That's what it means to wait. The wait, same way a waiter wait on a, a waitress or a waiter wait on a person. You know you put your order in. Praise God. They're going to minister to you. I'm expecting, praise God, what I ordered. The word of God, that's my order right there to come to pass. Hallelujah. I wait. And then you begin to change in that waiting and praise to God and renew their strength and power. And something begins to happen. Grace comes on you. And all of a sudden, they lift up their wings, he said, and mount up close to God. You just saw away from all of this frustration down here and all the bad reporting, CNN and ABC and Fox and CBS and, and all the Greensboro record and all the, the High Point Enterprise and all the, all the, 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 the Winston-Salem Journal and, 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 you know, the National Enquirer and all of this stuff, all the NASDAQ, the stock market. All of a sudden, you come out of that grace as you praise God and begin to mount up close to God like an eagle mount up close to the sun. We mount up close to the S-O-N the same way the eagle mount up close to the S-U-N. And the Bible says in that renewal, you'll run. See, God, grace restores you. You come back, glory be to God, and run and be not weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's the grace of God. That's a power. That's the power of grace right in the middle of a pandemic, right in the middle of children being out of school. Right in the middle of bills piling up. Right in the middle of, 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 of businesses closed down, banks closed down. Right in the middle of everything being shaken. There's, there can be a mounted up, praise God, as you begin to shout grace, hallelujah. That I have the grace of God and recognize that I can't do this by myself. And the Bible says he gives it grace to those that are humble enough to receive it. All God is asking us to do is cry out. That's what this whole thing should, we should be doing anyhow. If my people quit waiting around on the, on the, on the, on the politicians and, 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 and the world to change. That's what you're waiting on. You're waiting for, and God said, revival is not dependent upon what the White House is doing. The revival, and I know this is making some of you mad, good. It's dependent on what my people do. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, get their faith and confidence back in me out of the stock market, out of the business, and get their confidence in me, praise God, and turn from their wicked weeds. The Bible says, I hear from heaven and heal the land. Hallelujah. That's where revival starts. It starts in you. When you let that grace begin to pass on.
and start encouraging someone. Instead of your needs, start finding out who else needs can I make. Well, what, is there a widow somewhere? Is there an old elder person? Who can I go help? Maybe I'm going to send a $50 bill. There. When I'm in the grocery store next time, I'm going to buy some of my groceries. That's what I begin to do. Why? The grace of God is on me. Mm-mm-mm. And you'll walk and be not weary and run and not even faint. Woo! Look at Acts chapter 4 as we get ready to come on. Man, this is good. Now, God, grace then is God's divine strength. Let me give you another statement. It's God's divine strength taking over where your human strength ends. That's very important. He says, for when I'm weak in human strength. Have you ever felt exasperated? That you reach your breaking point, you can't take it anymore. So much pressure, bills, children, family, finances, coronavirus. Fear, worry, anxiety, car payment, house payment. God said, that's where my grace shows itself most effective. Your human strength is gone. And that's where God takes over with divine strength. Divine strength takes over where your human strength ends. Look at the Apostle Paul. Very unique scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. He said, by the grace of God, mm, I am what I am. I can't talk about my car, my house, my job, my this. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Why? He realized he was a sinner going to hell, persecuting the church, but God had mercy on him and chained him on the road of Damascus and gave him grace. Hallelujah. And he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, and by his grace, which was bestowed upon me, it was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly. See, that's grace not only in him, but on him. Times he got tired, but something came on him to cause him to labor. More abundantly than they all, yet not I, but it was that grace of God that was with me. It was that anointing. It was that power on me, helping me preach when I didn't feel like preaching. Helping me go, praise God, to Asia and preach the word. Helping me go to Rome and stand before Caesar. Going through the hard places. Even when I stood there and they stoned me, I, it was grace on me that kept me going. An ability beyond my own natural human strength. Oh, my God. See, the church haven't tapped into that part. We just talk about our American favor, how much we can sin and get by with, and God still loves us. Grace is more than that. Yes, he still loves you. And I'm not belittled in that part, but that's time you need that anointing, praise God. You need something coming on you. When you feel like fainting, and give it up. You need that anointing. He said it was the grace of God that was on me. Now look at Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. I trust y'all God's learning something, church. The reason I chose this. This message because I feel like this is a time to me. That's what we need right now. There's a lot of tough times, a lot of hardships. And Paul told Timothy, you be strong in the grace of God. And do a hardness as a good soul. We got to have a soldier's mentality. I'll do whatever it takes. We're going to get through this, praise God. Every member, word of life, every partner, every covenant friend. How we're going to come out strong in the name of Jesus. What the enemy meant for evil, God has worked for our good. Hallelujah. You might have stopped us from come meeting together physically in a church but let me tell you something now we are streaming we're speaking to the whole world we're speaking to other countries and nations praise God so thank you Satan that you have praise God increased my pool pit to the world hallelujah what the enemy meant for evil God has worked it for me see your attitude you got to make a positive spin on everything praise God hallelujah and then be grateful be thankful don't be like the people in the last days about one of the first things he said they would be unthankful be thankful that you're still alive, that the coronavirus haven't taken you. Look at the thousands of deaths worldwide, praise God. There are people that are grieving. There are people that are hurting. But by the grace of God, they haven't touched you or your family. That's something to praise God for. Don't, pray, don't, don't complain about what you don't have. Thank God for what you do have. Lord, I thank you that you've kept us safe. Hallelujah. A thousand fell by our side. Ten thousand. I heard about so-and-so and so-and-so, but it didn't come down where I dwell. So I praise you for divine protection. I thank you that grace has pitched a tent over me in my house. Woo! Glory be to God. That's what grace will do. It'll change you. Hallelujah. Acts 4. Look at verse 33 and 34. Acts 4, verse 33 and verse 34 says this. I want to also remind y'all guys to 
Tune in on Tuesday night at 730 for live streaming. Get the word of God. Visit the website, www.wordalive.tv, and just take advantage of all the different tools of ministry there. Praise God. Acts 4, verse 33 and 34. Look at this. Someone said, well, boy, well you know, you, you the pastor. Yeah, you the member. I'm glad you brought that up. Acts 4, verse 33 and 34. And with great power and, and uh, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and great grace. What? Great grace was upon the preacher, the deacons. No, was upon them all. There is a grace for everybody in the church. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be an apostle. Their great grace was upon. And let me show you what grace would do. Look at the next verse. When grace comes on you, neither there were any among them that lack. Grace will meet your need. Grace will take you through the through the pandemic, even though the, 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 the all types of jobs and, 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 and unemployment and all this has been shaken, they didn't lack anything. While the grace of God was supplying their daily bread, and it was upon them all. You need to confess right now, God's grace is upon me. Right where you're at at home. Son said, God's grace is upon me. How it is sufficient for me, praise God. How I have what it takes. If you didn't, God would have had you born in another generation. Quit feeling overwhelmed. When you feel overwhelmed, say, Lord, lead me to that rock that's hiding now. And that's when that grace, you'll begin to mount up. Amen? Neither they that lack anything, for many that possess houses and land, you're not going to lose them. If you want to, you can sell it and, and bring the price of it. You ain't losing anything. Grace will supply your needs. Bible says, hallelujah, that great grace was upon them all. I don't know if I was going to read this from the Amplified or not. I think I was. Let me, let, me, let me read it, if it is. It says here. It says, that, and with great strength, yeah, and ability. Look what he's calling grace. You know, we're back to the power of grace. Strength. Where? In the inner man. And ability. Whose ability? God's ability. Quit crying. Change your attitude. Get a positive attitude like the Apostle Paul. And power. Apostles delivered their testimony. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace. Loving kindness and favor and goodwill rested richly upon them all. Nor was there any destitute of needy person. Oh, I'm going to make the car payment. I'm going to make how about. Oh, no. Grace will meet your need if you start trusting God in it. God, grace, grace, grace has provided everything you need. Person among them, as many that were owners of land and houses, uh, proceeded to sell them one by one. And they bought them and gave it back. And the amount received from the sale. Glory be to God. Hundredfold return. Put up my statement here. Why don't you put up my statement. So great grace, strength, notice what he called ability and power, was upon them all, the whole church. All of them. Every last one of them. Great grace, ability, power was upon. Because you think this is just something on Pastor D. Well, you know, past here at church and all them other big preachers, they on television. No, it ain't got nothing to do with television. Grace is available for every born-again believer. Hallelujah. That's what God say. The Bible says you were saved by grace through faith. Faith is how you access grace. All God wants you to do is put faith in that grace and then it will be, it will be, you can access it. Hallelujah. That's strength. It was upon them all. So there's something upon you to deal with your household situation, your children being out of school, car payment, house payment, whatever it is, grace is upon. There's an ability. Hallelujah. And you need to tap into it and begin to confess it. Hallelujah, that I have grace. God's grace is sufficient to deal with any and every situation that's facing me, praise God. Great grace was upon them all. Amen? Now, I want to leave this with you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. Because, did we put up that statement, great grace was upon them all? I think we did. Amen? Not just the believer. Yeah, we put that up. So I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 4. And look at, look at verse 7 and 8. I want to look at this grace of the part. And then verse 11. It's Ephesians 4, as we close. Ephesians 4. So I know we might be getting cabin fever and getting a little, you know, edgy at home and all this. And remember, there's grace on you. There's grace on you. You can be graceful to your kids. You can be graceful to your parents. You can be graceful to one another. You can be graceful 
Amen. Hallelujah. Read the word of God. Grace and peace will be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Get in the word. Spend this time. Get your, make your church your altar at home. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 and look at verse 7 and 8. This is so very important as we get ready to close this. Ephesians 4 verse 7 and 8 says this, But unto every one of us grace is given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. To one, one or two of us, no, every one of us grace is given according to whatever God has called you to do. That's why I said whether you are children's church or you in praise and worship or whether you are uh, 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 you know, it doesn't matter, musician or, or in um, computer technology, there is grace. There are people running stuff right now to, to put this, this uh, taping together. There's grace on there. Every one of us have a grace according to the gift. God gives us all different gifts, praise God, so that the church don't lack anything. Great grace is upon them all. That's why some people are gifted with children. Some people are gifted with teenagers. Some people are gifted singing in the choir. But there's a grace. There's an anointing and ability. And what God wants us to do is put all of our graces together so that we don't lack anything. There's grace for people to work in the parking lot. Personally, I wouldn't do it, but there are guys. It can be raining, storming. They're out there wet, still helping people in with them. There's grace. Grace. There's an ability. There's an anointing. Great grace was upon them all the Bible says. And here he says, great grace is given, a uh, grace is given to every one of us according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Whereby when he said, he ascended on high and he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. He saw my grace gifts and then he began to name them in verse 11. And he gave some apostles. He gave some prophets. He gave some evangelists and pastors and teachers. Those are grace giftings. Look at this. I'm amplified. I don't know if we're supposed to read it. Yeah, from now. Yet God's grace, God's unmerited favor is given to each of us individually. Wow. That's why I said grace for cameras, grace for little kids, grace for teenagers, grace for, for, for Antoine. He's the choir director. He can do it better like grace for the musicians. I can't play, but someone else can. It's given individually, not indiscriminately, but in different ways in proportion to the measure of Christ, rich and bound to give. What is God's gifting? A man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. You don't have to try to do what everyone else is doing. Just find out what you're good at and bring that gift, and there's a grace on you to do it. I'm only going to tell you something right now. There's a grace on people to raise kids. You have to have grace to have children today. You better know that before you get pregnant. Praise God. Hallelujah, because your whole life is going to change. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he said, he led captivity captive and trained and vanquished foes, and he bestowed gifts on the men. And look what he, verse 11 said. And these gifts varied himself. Upon, see, there's grace gifts. He gave some of us apostles, special messengers, some prophets, inspired preachers, expounders. See, that's, that's my gift. The, I, I, my main gift is a pastor and a teacher. Now, God used me in the prophetic ministry and, and in the apostolic ministry. There are times that come on my life. I speak as an apostle. I speak. But though those these gifts, and notice there's a grace on me. That's why it's so clear. That's why people write and say, Pastor, you're so you make the word so simple. Well, that's God's grace. It ain't me. It's the grace of God on me. Hallelujah. He says, those who can preach and expound, explain, evangelists, preachers of the gospel, traveling ministries, some pastors, shepherds of his flock, and teachers. So those are some of the grace gifts. That's not all of them. There's all types of gifts. Remember, every one of us is given a gift. So everybody trying to become a five-fold ministry. You got churches, apostles, so and so, and the, and the building ain't, 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 big as, ain't big as the car. They got two people, and, and, and they in the family, and they're apostles. Everybody's apostles. Because everybody, they feel like it's got to be one of these gifts. I'm the bishop. I'm so-and-so. And who are you over? Well, I'm over my wife and my kids. Well, you, and that's it. You know, and everybody want a title. And, and, and you really don't need it. When a grace is on you to do what you're doing, you don't need a title. People know that's a pastor. That's it. Look at that anointing on him. Listen to that word. 
That's a prophet. You don't have to be called Prophet Joe or Prophet Selena. Now you name it. Don't get mad at me, but I'm trying to say a lot of times we are trying to create anointings instead of just letting the grace of God come on us and let people see our true calling. Paul said, I don't need no letter of, 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 of recommendation. Hallelujah. And, and I, I won't put this last statement up here. It says, then, then God's grace is given to each of us according to our God-giving gift. God's grace is given to each of us according to our God-giving gift. In other words, I just explained that whether it's running the camera, working at the Family Life Center, whether you, everybody has a great, whether it's yard work, whether it's maintenance around the church. There are people who love to keep this church clean. There's a grace on people to do that. There's a grace on to run the camp, to be a Sunday school teacher, to be, to be a, a, a in sound, and, and, and to, where there's a grace on the audio vision. There's a grace, praise God. There, there's an anointing. And God, we bring all these anointing together, and we begin to see the picture of Jesus. That's why we don't have to be jealous of one another anointing. Find out what, what your gifting is. And, and, and then perfect it. Look at Romans eleven twenty nine. It ain't going nowhere. Hallelujah. Well, I, I need to start preaching now. Well, if you call anything God called you to do, he's not going to change his mind. For God gifts and his calls are irrevocable. That means that he don't withdraw them. He never withdraws them when once they are given. He does not change his mind. Well, I call her to preach, I call her to run the camera, but I don't like him. Not now. We change our mind. God does not change his mind. About those, watch this, whom he gives his grace or who he sends his call. When God calls you to do something, he gives you grace, divine ability to do it. And that's been the problem. We've been going without God's grace, trying to pastor, trying to be a prophet, trying to be a Paul. And God didn't give you that call. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And people anoint themselves now. Jesus himself didn't do nothing except a voice came from heaven and gave him, praise God, what I, what I like to call uh, not only just approval, but gave him, uh, what's that word I like to use? Uh, 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 um, uh, when you identify someone, this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. Validation. He didn't even go forth. And once the father validated him, say, see, who's, who's your spiritual father? Who you under? Huh? And, and then notice, and the Bible says that then the Holy Ghost came, the anointing came at the validation. And there are people that ain't even validated, got mad at somebody else's church, started a church, and they wonder what. There ain't, ain't no grace on them to do it. And if grace ain't on you to pass the people, all you're going to do is hurt folks and become a hireling. And misuse and abuse them. Praise God. Don't have much time, but I'm going to use all my time telling you the truth. Praise God. So there are gift ministers. Now, let me just close with this. I remember, even in my own life, how there are seasons of grace. How that at one time, we were doing, I was doing four services a week. You know, I, we had two services before we built this new sanctuary. And the other church, two on Sunday. Then Tuesday night Bible study. And another pastor that had passed. A church asked me to come and pass to them and teach their Tuesday, Wednesday night Bible study. And, and I did that for, I don't know, seemed like five years and didn't bother me one bit. But that great, that was a season, man. I can't do that no more. That's too much preaching. That's why we built this church. See, there are grace that comes on you for seasons. And then I remember there was a time later on when I was a missionary doing missionary work. I was going into Africa. Went over there preaching and teaching the, the word of God and, and establishing churches. And, and I was bringing other uh, associate ministers with me. And there are still churches established that apostolic call. And, and, and I love doing that, praise God, for about six to eight years. But then that grace lifted. And God said, all right, I want you to stay home now. And then there came a mere season of grace where we begin to build these buildings. God said, concentrate on the building. You're teaching your own ministry. And we begin to build one, two, three bills. And God, by the grace of God, did it debt free. And I give all glory to God about that. So what am I saying? There are seasons of grace. You've got to recognize that there are seasons that God will have his anointing on you to do something. And then it will live. God's anointing was on David to kill giants. Praise God. He went out and slayed Goliath. But when David got old, the Bible says there came a giant. He went out and tried to slay a giant and almost got killed himself. 
And they think it was Abishab, Abishai and a couple other young men said, no, you stay home. You're the light of Israel. That grace has lifted on you. So I love you, church. I trust that you got something out of this. Amen. We're going to see you Tuesday night. I understand the grace of God. This, don't let this stand at home and everything frustrated overwhelm you. God's grace is sufficient, and it is more than enough for you. And half me and my wife, Joyce, we love you. Can't wait to see you back in the regular service. Until then, enjoy the live stream and see you Tuesday night.